My name, in case you don't know me, is Ajahn um, Brahma Lee. I'm one of the senior monks at Bodhinana Monastery. I've been staying with Ajahn Brahm for about, was it, 25 plus years now? So quite quite a while now. And um, uh, it's my privilege to be able to take part of this great idea of doing a meditation, an international meditation, um, come together in the honor of Ajahn Brahm for his 70th birthday. I think it's a great idea and it's a great opportunity not just to honor Ajahn Brahm and all his work, but also to do some of the practice that both the Buddha and, of course, Ajahn Brahm recommends that we all do together. <laughs> so this is an international event and it's happening in a large number of countries around the world roughly at the same time. Uh, the recordings are the same and the idea is the same to lead up to Ajahn Brahm's 70th birthday on the 7th of August. Uh, so it is a chance for all of us to take part in this birthday celebration in a meaningful way, not just as a ritual, not just as you know, an ordinary birthday party with champagne <laughs> and all of those kind of things, but actually a meaningful kind of birthday celebration. Uh, so what a marvel, marvelous thing uh, this is, uh, and it's a great idea and a great initiative to uh, do this particular um, <clears throat> this particular process of meditation. Uh, now, of course, uh, it matters enormously who it is that we do this for. Uh, in this case, it is Ajahn Brahm, and uh, Ajahn Brahm is uh, one of the probably most worthy people anywhere you can find uh, to honor in this particular way. Uh, I have lived with Ajahn Brahm for, to be precise, it is coming up 27 years now. And so it's quite a long time. And uh, I have no doubt that, uh, you know, in terms of meditation, in terms of spiritual qualities, uh, uh, things don't get much better than Ajahn Brahm. He is, uh, uh, part, he is you know, part of, part of the spiritual world, he has the qualities, uh, spiritual qualities developed to some of the highest levels possible. And what a marvelous thing it is to have a person like this as our teacher and uh, someone we can respect to the, in a sense, to the highest degree. Uh, so it is marvelous to be able to do this for someone like uh, Ajahn Brahm. Uh, and uh, Ajahn Brahm is someone who is like rock solid uh, someone who doesn't really waver very much at all, uh, someone who can withstand the storms of the world and the ups and downs, the upheavals of life. Uh, and he will always be there, always kind of standing against everything else uh, and uh, always rock solid in his, his qualities, uh, not allowing himself to be buffeted around by the winds of the, of the worldly dhammas uh, and all of those kind of things. Uh, so it is extraordinarily fortunate to have a teacher like this uh, and to be able to honor him on his 70th birthday. Now it is traditional in Buddhism to sometimes do what you might call meditation and then uh, share the merits of our meditation with uh, other people. In this case, Ajahn Brahm is a traditional way of doing things. And that's a marvelous thing to do, of course, to be able to share the goodness of our hearts, but also the uh, spiritual qualities that we have and that we develop over time to share those with other people. Uh, of course, with the case with someone like Ajahn Brahm, he probably doesn't need <laughs> us to share our good qualities with him because he already has such a developed mind of his own. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, but uh, also remember that one of the main reasons of doing this kind of thing is not so much for Ajahn Brahm. Uh, but it is also for ourselves. Uh, it is to take the opportunity uh, uh, by doing the Sangha Nusati, the recollection of the Sangha, uh, and taking the opportunity to practice, to do what the teacher is actually saying that we should be doing, uh, which is, of course, is doing the practice. Uh, the Buddha himself says that the highest way to honor him as a teacher uh, 
is not to offer flowers, it is not to do chanting, it is not to bow down and do all these kinds of things. Uh, the highest way to praise and honor a teacher is actually to practice the way that they teach. Uh, why? Well, because that's what they want. Uh, they want us to practice, they want us to gain the benefits of the Dhamma. And if we don't practice, well, then basically uh, their life doesn't have the purpose that it's supposed to have. The purpose of their life uh, is precisely to help other people find happiness and meaning in this existence of ours. Uh, so that is the greatest thing that we can do. So in this sense, we are respecting Ajahn Brahm to the highest level by doing the practice that he suggests that we should be doing. Uh, and I think it will also make him very happy to know that we are doing exactly what uh, he recommends that we should be doing. If you want to make Ajahn Brahm happy, if you want to transfer merit to Ajahn Brahm in a meaningful way, uh, then this is the way to do it, uh, by uh, doing exactly what he's telling us that we should be doing. Uh, so it's a marvelous opportunity to uh, do all of those things. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, reflect on the Sangha, the good qualities of the Sangha. Here we talk about the, uh, the noble ones specifically, and uh, then uh, gain some inspiration for our meditation practice, uh, and specifically for the metta meditation that we're doing here. Uh, and the idea of uh, metta meditation is precisely to uh, start out by focusing on the good qualities of other people. Yeah. So if we do the Sangha Nusati, the recollection of the Sangha, the recollection of the good qualities of our teachers, uh, then we are already on the way to metta, because metta is precisely this ability to understand and see the good qualities in other people, other beings, the devas, whoever it is. Uh, because when we remember the good qualities in other beings. Uh, that's when we feel a sense of joy, we feel a sense of uplift, we feel a sense of good qualities arising in ourselves. Uh, it is the opposite of anger, where we focus on the negative qualities, uh, metta, focus on the good qualities in people around us. Uh, so as we do this uh, metta meditation over the next uh, uh, 45 minutes or so, or whatever it is, uh, then uh, please remember that. Bring that positive mental state back again. Uh, remember the good qualities of the people you're focusing on, specifically Ajahn Brahm, because if this is dedicated to Ajahn Brahm, uh, but also anyone else, your Kalyanamittas, your friends, the Buddha, the Devas, uh, it doesn't matter so much, as long as we are able to see the good qualities in other beings. And then based on that, based on that, the sense of, gratitude and yeah well that is kind of the natural thing to have if you have a supreme teacher whether it's the buddha or whether it's Ajahn brahm or whoever it is uh, the idea is to have a sense of gratitude a sense of appreciation for that teacher uh, and that sense of gratitude uh, yeah combined with seeing the good qualities uh, all of this together lifts us up and it allows us to have these positive feelings uh, that we can call metta or kindness or compassion or whatever and spread that to the people around us, uh, including, of course, Ajahn Brahm himself. Uh, so there you are. And that is just a little bit uh, by way of introduction, just to remind you what the purpose of this is. Uh, and uh, now the time has come to do some meditation together. So as always, uh, make sure that you sit comfortably. <clears throat> It doesn't matter so much how you sit, as long as you are at ease. And then start off, close your eyes, take off your glasses, <laughs> and close your eyes, and start off, as always, with meditation by just feeling your body, allowing yourself to know whether you are at ease, whether you are relaxed, whether the body doesn't have any pains or any problems in it, but allow everything of that sort to be minimized because meditation practice is not about the body. Meditation practice is about developing the mental qualities.
and I recommend you to get into a nice routine, a routine where you go through basically the same steps every time. Sometimes you can do it fast, sometimes slow, depending on the progress of your meditation practice. We go through the same steps just to make sure that you are ready. So allow yourself at the beginning always enough time to really relax, really be at ease so that you enjoy just sitting here. Ensure that you have no coarse defilements in the mind because they will block your ability to do meditation practice. Make sure that you have an appreciation for all the people that you are sitting with. It's marvelous to be able to sit in a group with many people and to build up that energy together. What a wonderful thing it is to have that opportunity. So make sure at the beginning that things are basically right. Things are at ease. Things are relaxed. And gradually, as you allow things to relax and you allow the world to fade away, mindfulness will gradually build up. And just allow the body to gradually fade away. And to do that, make sure at every step that you are at ease, that you are relaxed, that you are enjoying yourself. And as the body fades away, as the world fades into the background, you can feel for yourself that mindfulness starts to arise and starts to become powerful. So don't do anything, don't do any real meditation until mindfulness is reasonably well established, uh, until you have a high degree of clarity of mind uh, and the presence of the mind is quite strong. Uh, and only then move on to the next stage of the meditation.
And uh, as you feel the mindfulness getting established, uh, then is the time to move on to the meditation object proper. Uh, and to start off, uh, try just to imagine if, for a while, if you like, uh, just to remember the great good fortune you have to have so many marvelous Kalyanamitas in this world. Uh, you have the Buddha to be there to support you. Uh, you have the great uh, modern teachers like Ajahn Brahm and others as well. Uh, and you also have all the Kalyanamitas in the Buddhist community, part of the Buddha society, wherever it is that you belong. Uh, and what a marvelous thing it is to have all of this support in life. Uh, and just reflect on that tremendous good fortune for a while. Uh, and see if you can feel that sense of beauty, the sense of, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the sense of uh, power, or having such great support in your life on the spiritual path. Uh, And uh, once you have established uh, that sense of gratitude, the sense of seeing uh, the good qualities and all these good people and good beings in the world, uh, then direct your mind to one of the four directions. Uh, let's start with the northern direction. Uh, and it doesn't matter so much where the north is. Uh, just imagine the northern direction. Uh, and as you do so, uh, remember that to the north, uh, many of these Kalyanamitas, uh, even noble people in this world, people who have attained the great insights of the path, uh, actually live in the northern direction. Uh, what a marvelous thing it is to be able to share the world with such people and such beings. Uh, so direct your mind to the north uh, and wish all the beings in the north uh, May you be well, may you be happy.
And uh, now, if you like, uh, you can turn your attention around to the eastern direction. Uh, and again, re-establish that sense of being so uh, fortunate to have all of these Kalyanamitas in the world. Uh, and not just human beings, but sometimes the beings that have the most beautiful qualities uh, are the devas in this world. Uh, these beautiful beings of light and beauty uh, with so many good qualities in their hearts. Uh, so if you like, you can imagine the devas uh, in the eastern direction, uh, the powerful spiritual qualities, uh, some of them noble ones, uh, because that is where you can expect the noble ones to be. Uh, so may all those beings in the eastern direction, uh, may they all be well, uh, may they all be happy. Uh, And uh, now, if you like, you can turn your direction around to the southern direction. Uh, and you can include now all the monks at Bodhinyana Monastery, which are to the south of here. Uh, and also remember at the same time, all those uh, monastics in the world, whether male or female, uh, were spending their entire time just practicing the spiritual path. Uh, what a wonderful thing it is to have monastics like this uh, who dedicate their life 100% uh, to purifying their minds and to living good lives. Uh, what a wonderful blessing that is for the world and for everyone to have this kind of support. Uh, 
So use that as a basis for having metta to the southern direction as well. May all beings to the south, may you all be happy. May you be well.
And uh, now, if you like, uh, you can turn your mind around to the western direction. Uh, this time, you can also include all the animals of the world, uh, the animals that are so vulnerable to suffering, uh, so vulnerable to all the changes and problems in the world. Uh, may all those animals uh, and all the beings in the western direction, uh, may you all be well. Uh, May you all be happy. And uh, now, if you like, uh, imagine the whole planet Earth in your mind's eye, this beautiful planet of blue and green and white uh, and a little bit of brown among all of that. Uh, and remember that this planet Earth uh, is where some of the greatest spiritual teachers uh, uh, have existed, uh, people like the Buddha, people like all the noble ones that have arisen after the Buddha's time. And what a marvelous thing it is to live on a planet like this. But not just that, there have been thousands, millions of beings, millions of people with beautiful qualities in the heart of kindness, compassion, care, and all of the wonderful things that we are searching for. And now allow a light, a golden light, uh, to extend out from your heart uh, and then enveloping this beautiful planet uh, with all of these good beings. Uh, and it's as if the golden light coming out of your heart uh, lays, it, lies itself, lays itself as a blanket around the planet, uh, a beautiful blanket uh, to comfort uh, and to give kindness uh, 
and to give care to everyone who is there. May everyone on this marvelous planet, uh, may you all be well, uh, may you all be happy. Yeah. And now bring your attention back to all your Kalyanamitas, uh, all your spiritual friends, uh, including Ajahn Brahm. And uh, what a wonderful thing it is to have such spiritual friends in this life. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being my beautiful companions uh, who make this life possible to live in a better way. Uh, Thank you, especially Ajahn Brahm, for being such a marvelous teacher of the Dhamma, such an inspiring example of practicing the path in the right way. What a wonderful thing it is to have such people in this world. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. May you be well, may you be happy.
And uh, now let us uh, share the merits of this practice with everyone in this entire world. Share with all the beings that are here, and especially our Kalyanamitas, the people who have been very close to us in this life and who have encouraged us to practice the path in the right way. Share the merits of our practice, the merits of our entire lives of keeping precepts and everything else. Share with all your family members, all the people who are close to you in this world. And last but not least, share the merits of this practice with Ajahn Brahm himself, uh, this great teacher who has been a mainstay and support for so many people in this world. Uh, Ajahn, we wish you the very best. Uh, we share all our merits with you. Uh, may you have a long life still to come. Uh, and may you continue to inspire us all, uh, for all of us to move towards uh, happiness, uh, samadhi, and eventually awakening itself. And uh, as we are approaching the end of this meditation, uh, please just come back to your breath uh, and stay with your breath for a few moments.
And uh, now we are coming close to the very end. Before we come to the end, please take a moment or two just to evaluate your meditation. How do you feel now? And if you feel better, more at ease, more kindness in your heart, uh, and ask yourself why that is the case. Uh, how does this process of meditation work? Uh, and when I ring the bell three times, uh, then please come out of your meditation. Uh,